of three integers. And these are the values of the array. So if you have like a C style array, it'll display them, the values right here. My last thing I want to say is if you use things like STL strings or STL vectors or maps, it, G, DDD will not understand those. So like you can put up the vector here, but you're not going to see the elements of the vector unless you do a little digging. So this is a big problem. It's one of my pet peeves. And it's one of the things that actually Visual Studio and Windows does really well. It does that really well. So that really frustrates me. But anyway, um, Dave wanted to show Valgrind. So if there's, this is just a really quick overview. I'm going to write some notes online. But I hope you got the name of some programs and you got the, just the intro of what to do. Were there any questions or anything? No, okay. So there's another utility you should definitely know about. What I don't know about it, it's called Valgrind. And Dave is going to tell us about it. So I'm going to just switch to his computer here. This one is um, more of a memory checker than anything else. That's not it. Um, I use this with my C programs because C can be notorious for not doing, or you can do things with C and it won't generate errors. Um, this is my simple, that's oh, weird, um, let's take it off. This is my simple program and if you look at this there are lots of problems with this program. Um, we are only alloc allocating 10 bytes for a character array and then we're going to put something into it that we have no idea what size it is. And then we're going to print it back out, we're going to free it, and then copy something into it even after we freed it, which in C you, well, we'll see. And then print more. So this is, there's lots of problems with this, but this program, surprisingly enough, is going to run. What it does is it takes two, op two arguments from the command line and spits them back to you. That's the things it copied around. Um, and it prints it. Now that something is longer than 10 bytes, just so that everybody knows. So what you can do with this, um, when you compile it, you have to put in the debugging symbols again, which is G, and then uh, Z. And then you can load this up. Now you could figure this out with a debugger as well, but there's a couple of things that um, Valgrind can tell you at the end. So in order to use Valgrind, you don't have to do anything to your compile step except add the debug symbols, and then you just run your executable, and it throws it in here. Um, oops, I forgot to put some command line arguments. Now it's not very user friendly. Um, there are better tools, but all of them cost thousands of dollars. The CS department has a few of them, so if you're lucky enough to be on their systems, then you can use them. Otherwise, you're stuck with Valgrind. The nice thing that it will do is it does tell you at least the line number of the issue that it found. So like here on line 9, there was an invalid read, and if I draw up my other other window. Line 9 is of course this one and it's the string copy. So even though this command functionally works in C, it's telling you that you are actually writing off the end of the X array of what you've allocated for it. Um, and it's telling you you're doing something not so good. Um, oops. You can continue to look through this um, and I'll tell you each occurrence Oops, I went too far. And there's the string copy. There's another problem on line 13. I keep doing the same thing he does as point. Um, but it will tell you the line number that you need to look at. But it really doesn't tell you exactly what you did. You kind of have to go back to your code, look at the line, and see what the heck you did. Mm -hmm. The uh, other nice thing that I like to do and what I really use it for is memory leaks. And I'm off. Jeez. 
cookies. Now, if I just run this, and then run it again, right here at the bottom, there's a leak summary. And it'll tell you that you have 10 bytes still allocated in some block somewhere that you didn't free. Now, in this particular instance, it's not a big deal because that all got freed when your program ended. But if you have a structure like that within a for loop and you don't ever free it and you keep allocating more and more memory, um, it just keeps building up. And this is where it will get caught at the end of your program. It will tell you that you have this so many structures that have not been freed. Um, there are some programs that you can, um, if you can watch the memory usage of the system that's running this, your code on, you can watch the memory just keep going up, but that doesn't tell you if there is a, really is a problem, a memory leak, or anything like that. And so I use this kind of at the last little bit to check to make sure that I'm taking care of all of my memory. Now, I've never done anything with Fortran with Valgrind. I don't know if you can. I've only done it with C. So... Fortran does different things for allocation, memory allocation and whatnot, than C does. Um, so I don't know exactly how to do Fortran with Valgrind. There are, the better programs will pop up a GUI interface and they'll have drop down menus and say, this is your line, and like for line 13, you just copied something into an array that you just freed. This is not space that you can copy into. It'll tell you exactly what you did. Valgrind is not so, not so friendly. Um, cool. But it is excellent at catching your memory issues at the end of a at the end of a program. I don't know how much else to show than that, though. It's it's pretty straightforward, pretty simple, and you have to stare at it to figure out what the problem is. That's good, though. It's similar to like when I turned on the floating point error catching in Cooper. It was I didn't think I had any errors, and then I turned it on, and then I had like ten divide by zeros in my code. And then, like, this is the same thing. I'm sure if I use this on Cooper, there's going to be, like, 20 places where I'm writing off the end of things and I don't realize it, so... Now, if your code has no problems, it does not really print out anything except it's a little header file. So if you get nothing, that's what you want. Okay. You can do it if there's input as well. You'll just get a line that you'll have to type things in, but it probably will separate any... If you output a message to prompt any user input, it will probably get separated by any of these if there are errors. So there's always that issue of syncing up. Okay. Any questions or anything? Okay. So, like I said, we're gonna switch to uh, we're gonna very shortly go to the stadium to discuss the uh, 2009 Hacker Within Python Bootcamp. Uh, okay. Huh? To a, to a 2010, yeah, that's true. Okay, wow, wrong decade. So, uh, uh, so anyway, so join us and thanks for thanks for coming. This will be on YouTube. It's gonna be it's gonna be good. Okay, leave. Uh.